I have been talking to CEOs, CTOs, CIOs on a daily basis. And yes, last one year and even till now, everybody wants to do AI and nobody knows what to do with it. What are the use cases? There's a lot of inertia. And if you say I'm Omer.ai, everybody would want to talk to me. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and you, I can even raise money with that as well. But you are right. People are frozen in, for many respects, not just in AI. They are not spending elsewhere as well because they think that, hey, if I am spending, if I spend money on this digital transformation, who knows? I can do it for free with AI in six months' time. So yes, the world I would say is frozen, and, and the the middle part of the world. I mean, there will always be leaders and laggers. But uh, but let's say if I if I've spoken to over 200 companies in the last two quarters, I would say 90% of them are really, really frozen. They want to hear what can be done and uh, they are not yet ready to pull the trigger. Uh, and, and there's a lot of noise as well. Why? Because there are, I mean, every company now calls themselves an AI company. You can get an agent right from $1 to maybe a million dollar. So, Nobody knows what to what to do about that. Uh, so that's 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 where what I have seen. I've been talking to uh, uh, the business leaders, uh, C suite, and yes, th that's the situation. Well, well. So my my other um, combining factor here is that in order to get an AI program to really produce max value, you need incredibly deep and clean data. And the dirty secret of most organizations is their data sucks that they don't have deep, clean data. They don't even know where their data is. They know they have a lot of it, but they're not sure they want to admit, maybe they don't even want to admit how bad their data can be. And so they don't know how they're going to take advantage because deep down inside, they're not sure they have the natural resources, I guess, internally to, to even build something that's going to move the needle. So you're, um, I mean, you're right that, uh, uh, there, there, there is uh, a need for data be to correct it. But let me, let me, let me just uh, tackle this question a little differently, and we'll come to that data part as well. So I think it's very important to first understand what is an AI and uh, what is a Gen AI and what is the classical AI was. I mean, we had been investing in AI projects and so on and so forth. The classical AI is, is like you used to have a team, you used to collect data. Then you build model, then you use to annotate their data, train that model, and it would it would be like an year-long project to do something out of an AI. With Gen AI, Doug, the AI piece has already been done. You are not doing actually an AI. You are using you're doing actually, if I'm strictly speaking, the Gen AI part, you're actually doing digital transformation uh, with AI, which has already been done, and that is we are calling AI transformation. Now, what, what does that really mean? So if you think of these LLMs, they, they are akin to a brain. And uh, our brain, kind of, as uh, Andrew Ann said, I mean, we do four or five things pretty well. We can summarize, infer, generate, or expand onto anything. And now we have an artificial brain that would do that. Now, plug it into a typical digital transformation project. Now you have access to brain. So that means you can understand conversations. You can infer meaning out of those. There's a lot of natural language processing that has become very easy. So that's what the capability that Gen AI has provided us. Now it's our job really to use that capability in a digital transformation project. So Gen AI, AI has, part has been done. You have to use this capability. Now this capability, because it's a brain and it's non-deterministic, sometimes it gives you an accurate answer, sometimes it won't. It will hallucinate and many times it will give you two different answers to the same questions, like a human would. So how, how should you really approach this project? Uh, the very first projects that you can really approach is, I, I generally tell my customers, look, if creation of a something takes you about, let's say, 10 hours, but if somebody has created it and verifying is taking you like two hours, and 80% of the time, it's right. That is a, a one typical area that where you can, we can do a lot of AI. So I think you have to approach 
projects in a uh, in in different way or there are in terms of creating new thing if you are fine if 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 it sometimes not generate the generate the correct thing but it can fall back to human these are all use cases where this these models can work very well as of today so that is why customer support marketing becomes a very original ones the or the earlier ones because in marketing you can hallucinate its cloud creativity customer support you can always fall back to a human so this is the ai part is we are not doing we are just using this brain as a part of a digital transformation so one thing that thing people know and before i let you speak there's one more thing there's also a difference in the way you accept these projects i mean this typical software project you have an accept acceptance criteria and you say this has done this 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 we should be able to accept it over here you will not get an accurate thing so you need to have something called i would call a confidence score that i'm confident that 70% of the time it gives you my right output so i mean there's a different way of approaching these ai projects and then it will open up a world of opportunity for you at least that's what we are doing for our own organization if not for others well so the term digital transformation which you've been using um is a term that's been around for a very long time and is a term that i would almost suggest people are tired of hearing about it because they because because they haven't been able to figure it out and that's another one of those things where it's like everybody's been talking about digital transformation and i would again argue knowing kind of my perspective on this that most companies could never quite figure out what digital transformation really meant to them and so they'd talk about it give it lip service but but they didn't really get there and achieve it and maybe now what you're suggesting is because they're because of generative ai and because of these large language models it makes digital transformation an actual practical path that they can now get to and maybe and maybe that's the first step is start to do digital transformation before they figure out real custom ai implementation is that is that is that what you're seeing so so about that but let let, let let's walk let's let, let's see how we transform a process so let's say doug says hey omar can you kind of do an ai transformation for my sales process for instance and i would say how 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 would i approach it and that will address all all two three things i would say let's on a piece of paper on a whiteboard let's see what do you do to do your sales i mean do you send out messages and somebody responds to you then you kind of enrich that lead and then you talk to them and while talking to them you kind of uh, get into the your past experience portfolio and so on and so forth so these are all the steps that you want that you are doing now some of these steps you are doing on pencil and paper analog steps or manual steps you cannot do any ai on top of that so very first thing you need to get them done digitally so that's your digital at a very core that's your digital transformation that you're not not doing it in a digital is way. that is that is that truly what you see as as kind of basic digital transformation is just moving from analog uh, to digital we are, so so you get you start there uh, you start into your digital transformation journey by moving i mean at the core of it what is digital this is digital you were doing a paper thing you did but but then you when you getting into the weeds you're redefining your process you're doing a business process reengineering you're doing a business process optimization you're seeing what are the objectives you're aligning your digital transformation objectives with the business objectives and so on so forth i mean so i mean yes it's a very uh, i've i've tried to make it very simple for that but it's a, it's a very it's a huge thing in its own right but what 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 what, what i'm trying to get to if you do not have a process doing being done kind of digitally uh doing an ai transformation on top of it will not start and to your point if you do not have the data what you're trying to achieve so i mean there are things that you can still do without data so let's say dog wants to know about but because someone else has that data so you want to know more about me you tell an agent hey find me more information about omar you may not have that but the linkedin will have it the world wide web will have that so you you will still can kind of diving into that data and getting that information for me but if you want to apply on your own company you just need to have that data to so your first point at the very core if you really want to do it right you need to have data and part a lot of your data gets generated as a part of a digital transformation process and then if there is so much data 
you probably, you're an enterprise, you probably have, should have your data strategy, you should have your data governance in place, the way you organize your data, your warehouse, lakes, marts, and so on. And then on top of it, you can build your AI transformation, but that's where we're talking about the, the big guys.